Hello everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel and my name is Rahul. Recently, I migrated my blogs from Hugo to Gatsby and I wrote about it in my blog. If you're wondering where my blogs are, head over to rahulpinath.com. The link is in the description below. Gatsby is a static site generator and it does require building before I publish my website. Initially, I used to build and host on Netlify, which has a free starter plan. but i didn't know about the 300 minutes limit on the netlify free starter plan because i never ran into it when i was using hugo but with gatsby the bills do take a lot longer and i soon ran out of my build minutes now i could pay 7 dollars and get extra 500 minutes on netlify with the starter plan but why bother when i could do all this for free at least for the time being and also get a chance to make a new video on how i do it In this video let's look at how to set up a build pipeline for a Gatsby site using GitHub Actions and deploy it into a Netlify site. So why GitHub Actions? If you are a regular viewer of this channel or at least seen some of my previous videos, you would know that I mostly make videos around Azure DevOps. Now Azure DevOps is a really great service and I have talked about it in detail in my getting started with Azure DevOps. Check out the link here. or in the description below if you are new to it but like i mentioned in that video azure devops does have a limit of 1800 free minutes per month now i use this for my side projects and also for my other youtube videos i certainly didn't want to consume that for building my blog with github actions you get 2000 minutes every month for free but even better for public projects it's completely free which makes it a perfect candidate for my blog because it's hosted publicly available on my github repository the link is there in the description below in case you are interested to check it out so this means i could do all my builds for free using github actions for how long i don't know at least until github decides that everyone has had a fair share and takes off this free plan but at least till then i'm better off using this free version rather than paying a 7 dollar per month to netlify just for my builds for this video i will use a gatsby starter kit that i had cloned to show how to set up the build deploy pipeline heading off to my github account i have a gatsby startup which is named youtube gatsby github actions the link is there in the description below this is just a fork of the gatsby starter site i have this cloned to my local machine and up and running with the gatsby develop so this is the source code and this is the terminal where this is running using the gatsby develop it's hosted on localhost 8000 so if i was to go there you can see that the site is up and running now if you're just getting started with gatsby and you have a very small site your build minutes might not be that long in this case you can quickly set this up using netlify builds migrate over to github actions only if you need to and run over their build plans otherwise i don't recommend spending this time but if you want to learn why not to set this site up on netlify let's go to netlify.com and create a new site from the git repository clicking that will give us the option to select the git provider i have it on github so let's select that let me select my repositories and give it access only to select repositories and select this particular starter template it starts with youtube so let's select that and click install once confirmed it allows you to select the repository to build the site netlify has detected that this is a gatsby site and automatically set this up for us so it's using gatsby build to build out the public folder and uses the public directory as its published folder this all looks good so let's click deploy site this will trigger off the build in netlify and automatically deploy this into a site if we want a custom domain for this we can set this up in the site's name for now let's call this youtube gatsby github so this site will be accessible at this url let's wait for the builds to finish if you click there you can see the details of the build which is exactly what would have happened on your local machine if you ran gatsby build the build is successful and it has also published the website so let's go back and navigate to the url of the website you can see that the website is successfully published and we are all up and running with gatsby since this is a small site the deploy time was not that much but still it took around 1 minutes so depending on how many builds you have going on a month you might soon run into the build limits you can see the build limits under your team and going into billing 
you can see i have already consumed the seven dollar plan for this month because i just ran over that and my bills were taking way much longer than this starter site to create a new bill pipeline in github we need to create what is called a workflow file in github actions a workflow is a configurable automated process made up of one or more jobs it's created in a yaml file very similar to the azure devops pipeline these workflow files should live under a specific folder which is .github/workflows so you can create this file locally in your repository and push this up or also create this from the github ui let's head off to the github repository so this is where i have my repository for this gatsby starter site you can see there's a new tab which is called actions this is where we create the workflow file now clicking this gives us an option to choose different templates so you could search for one that has gatsby or a node.js version or get started with a new workflow which is using empty template even though it's an empty template there's a fair amount of code that's there to get started let's go ahead and clean this up as we go along first let's give this a name so let's name this netlify builds in github actions you have the split panel where you can also see the documentation and also search for actions which we will come to in a short while so if you want to see what exactly on means you can switch to documentation and see what that means so on determines when these workflows are triggered now this specifies when you push up into branches master this workflow has to be triggered or also when you raise a pull request on the branches master since i just require it on the push i can remove this and just leave it with the push if you want to have a schedule there's also an option to specify a schedule and also give a cron expression that you want this to run under so let's not bother with that now and just leave it with on push branches and master so any time you push some changes to the master branch this workflow is going to get triggered let's remove the extra space and move on a workflow is made up of one or more jobs that can be run sequentially or in parallel so now this by default has a job and it has a single job which is called build it also specifies what machine it has to run on so this is running on an ubuntu latest you could choose different platforms which is available in the documentation again so if you are unsure you can search here or check out the detailed documentations for github actions i leave it with ubuntu latest because that works fine with a gatsby site each job has multiple steps so which is what is represented here so steps represent a sequence of tasks that will be executed as part of the job so let's go over them one by one so we have steps by default we need to check out the repository which is under the github workspace so your jobs can access it each step you can define a name and also the user's attribute the user's attribute selects an action to run as part of each step in your job what is an action it's a reusable unit of code all these actions are either defined in the same repository as a workflow it could be a public repository or it could be a published docker container image so if we head back to the workflow code we can see this uses an actions with checkout and the version v2 so if we were to go to actions and checkout under github you can see that is a repository so if i go to github.com slash whatever i copied that's actions slash checkout this is a public repository that's available and it has different versions which is what we are referring using the at symbol you could either specify to a specific sha version or the full version or minor major versions so the different options are documented in here there are recommendations on which one to use and pick one that matches your needs in this case i will use the checkout at v2 which came by default now if i want to give a name for this i can add a name attribute and specify this is a checkout action so i could say checkout source code which is going to name this particular step now once i have the source code checkout i need to specify the node version where this needs to build so heading over to the marketplace here i can search for node and this should give us some actions that will help us do that here we have the setup node js environment which is exactly what we want so let's select that it will show us how to set this up so it says users actions setup dash node at version 1.4.2 so let's copy those two lines and paste it inside our build pipeline file so let's go to the right place which is after source code checkout 
and paste this. Make sure the alignment is correct. Now we need to specify what version we need to set. That is usually done with the width and specifying the property. So in this case, we have width and the version property that we can set. So we could go and set width and specify the node version. Let's say I want any version which is of 12. So now this is going to set up the Node.js environment and use this specific node version when this step runs. Once that's done, I need to run my build scripts using the yarn command line or npm scripts. So since I need multi-line scripts, I'm going to remove the single line command because I no longer need that. Clean up the white spaces. And this is how you write up multiple line commands. So let's say this is going to be build the site. I could replace this with the yarn commands. So let's say yarn install. If you want, you can pass in the dash dash production flag and also specify the yarn build command. This is going to run the build script inside our package.json in our source code, which is going to trigger the Gatsby build. Now that we have the site built and ready, we just need to push this output folder, the public folder into Netlify. So let's go back to the marketplace and search for Netlify actions that we can use. So I've been using this Netlify actions by the username NWTGCK. So if you want to know more about this, you can actually go to the full marketplace listing and also see the source code and other details of this particular action. So let's go back and look at the Netlify actions that we need to use. So this again is going to use the dash name and specify the users. So let's copy that and paste it in our workflow file. Let's make sure that the formatting is correct and give the additional properties that this action requires. I have this already written out. So let me copy paste that in here. So here it says Netlify actions. So let's rename this as deploy to Netlify. So this uses that particular action that we chose. And it says you need to publish the directory, which is dot public, which is exactly what we saw when Netlify set up the automatic builds. It's saying the production branch master. So if you want the deploy message to reflect that of this commit, you can use the GitHub dot event head commit and that will have the message. Now that is basically coming from the GitHub context. That is a context data in the environment variables. So anytime you, you use GitHub, you can access the different parameters and values under that, which is how I used the commit message. Since we are deploying to Netlify, we also need to know which Netlify site to deploy to and also a Netlify auth token, which authorizes us to deploy into that particular site. So we'll need to set this up as secrets. We'll do that in a moment. Now that we are done with all the steps inside the workflow, let's commit this using start commit. And you can either commit this into a different branch and raise a pull request or commit directly to the master branch and add a description if required. So let's say deploys to Netlify. That's done. So let's commit this new file. This is going to add the file under .github and workflows directory. To set up the secrets, we need to go into settings of the repository and under secrets, we can set this up. So let's click the new secret and use the name and the value for that. So the name is Netlify site ID for the site identifier, which we can get from the Netlify site. So let's go back to the sites and go to site settings. The app ID is the name that's required to be used there. So let's copy that. Go under back to secrets and paste that under the value and click add secret. The next secret is the Netlify auth token. So let's click that, give in auth token and go back to Netlify. Under your account, you can see user settings. Under applications, you can have a personal access token which you can use. So let's create a new one. I'm going to immediately delete this. So let's say delete one, generate the token, copy this and use that as your secret value. Once that's set up, let's go back into actions to deploy this. So let's go to actions. The build has already started when we committed the file and it would have failed in the deploy to Netlify step because it didn't have the credentials provided. Now that we have set this all up, let's rerun this jobs. So clicking that is going to trigger this job again. So you can see all the steps that we set up which is check out the source code, setting up the Node.js environment, building the site and deploy to Netlify. 
You can expand this to see more details. Now the build is successful and so is the deploy to Netlify step. Since this time around when it ran, it had access to the secrets. So it has published this to this particular site. If we go to Netlify, go back, go to our website and go to the deploys tab in here, you can see this new deployment that we just did. And it also has the description that we gave in the netlify.yaml file. However, you see that there is also another build, which is the one that Netlify has automatically triggered. Now, if you don't want to run into the build minutes issue, you need to turn off the builds that's happening on the Netlify side. To do that, go back to the overview, go to the site settings, under the build and deploy, in the build settings, you can edit this and stop the builds for this particular site since we don't need that anymore. Now, since Netlify no longer requires access to GitHub, you could also go to GitHub settings and remove the accesses under the app settings and remove all the repository access for this Netlify application. So this should stop the builds from Netlify happening. So let's verify that. So let's go back to our local source code. Let's do a git pull. The easy way to do that if you are on VS code is use control shift P and then type in git pull. This is going to automatically pull down the source code and also give us the YAML file that we just added. The pull is successful. So you can see the .github folder, which has the main.yml file that we just added. You could also edit this in here and push this up if you want to make changes to your workflow file. So let's leave that for now. Let's go into the source and for the pages, let's go to the index page and add a new line which says, the site is automatically built using GitHub Actions and deployed to Netlify. It looks good, let's save that. Let's go to the local host running version. You can see that change is automatically reflecting here because I have Gatsby Develop running on my machine. With this changes, let's push this up. So let's save the change and give a commit message updated index file let's commit that again to push up you can use Control shift p and type in git push so this pushes up the changes to the github repository which should automatically trigger a build because we have mentioned that in the yaml file the changes are pushed successfully so let's go back to github and go under actions and a new build is successfully triggered by github actions so let's make sure that Netlify is not building this. So let's go to Netlify under overview and deploys. You can see there's no builds triggered. And it also says activate builds on this side to resume the continuous deployment. So let's wait for the GitHub actions to run and finish. If you want to see more details about this, you can click in and see the exact state of the steps that it is running. The build is successfully done. So let's go into Netlify. And under the deploys, once we refresh this, we can see a new published deploy, which has the same git commit message that we specified, which is updated the index file. So let's navigate to the published website, youtube-gatsby-github and refresh this. And we see the new line that we just added. So we have successfully set up a build in GitHub Actions for a Gatsby site and deployed it to a Netlify. All of this is running for free. And this is exactly how I run my blog currently. Hope this helps you to set up a build pipeline for your Gatsby site and run this for free until GitHub decides to remove the free plan. But then I'll be here with a new video on how to run it again for free. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please make sure to hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want to be notified of my blog post, you can go to rahulpinath.com and click the subscribe button in here. Every time I publish a new post, you should have an email in your inbox. Hope this helps. Thank you and see you soon.